Chemistry lecture number 29, sections of the periodic chart. Periodic chart is divided into many sections. Uh, you need to memorize the location and names of the sections. Horizontal rows on the chart are called periods, and there are seven periods on the chart. Period 1 in red right here, well, sort of red contains elements hydrogen and helium. Uh, period 2 contains elements lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine. Period 3 contains sodium, magnesium, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon. Period 4 contains potassium, calcium, scantium, I think, is that, what is that called? Yeah, scandium. Titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, I think that is, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc, gallium, germanium, arsenic, selenium, bromine, and uh, krypton. Okay, so all these horizontal rows, those are periods. Now there are two horizontal rows below the main chart, these guys right here. Um, these have separate names that we'll get to later. Vertical columns are called groups or families, and there are 18 groups on the chart. So all these vertical columns, these are groups. So uh, group one contains hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. Group two, right here, uh, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. Group 12 over here uh, contains zinc, cadmium, mercury, and copernicum, and or, co or copernicium, sorry. Uh, this is a relatively new element. It's got the atomic number of uh, 112. Now, the elements that get filled in along here, uh, the elements on the bottom of a group tend to be newly discovered elements. Uh, as new elements are discovered, older periodic charts become out of date and won't match the newer charts. So, uh, as you look at different charts through the years, uh, these spots right here get filled in with new elements that are being synthesized. The chart can be divided into three main sections, uh, representative elements, transition elements, and inner transition elements. Representative elements uh, include groups 1, 2, and 13 through 18. So 1, 2, and then 13 through 18 right here. And these elements in this picture here appear in gray, and this shaded in uh, pink or red right here is also a representative element. And these uh, groups are sometimes called the main group elements. And notice that the numbers above here are different. Um, group 1 is labeled 1A, Group 2 is labeled 2A, and columns 13 through 18 are labeled 3A through 8A. And on some periodic chart, they use Roman numerals, so uh, instead of uh, using 6A, this would be written as, you know, VIA. VI is the Roman numeral for six. And again, this is an older style of labeling uh, the representative elements that you need to know. Uh, group one, or 1A elements, these are called the alkali metals, these ones right here. And then group two, or 2A, these ones right here, are called the alkali earth metals. Okay. Straight. Uh, group 17 or 7A, these elements right here, uh, those are called the halogens. Have you ever heard of halogen lamps? That's the elements in this column right here. And group 18 or 8A, these are called the noble gases. Transition elements include groups 3 through 12. And this is a block of elements that's in the middle of the chart between the two taller columns. All right, so here are our transition elements highlighted in green. Notice again that uh, alternate labels are used uh, on the columns. Uh, groups 3 through 7 are labeled 3B, 
4B, 5B, 6B, and 7B. And then groups 8, 9, and 10, these are collectively labeled as 8B. So these are all labeled as 8B. And then groups 11 and 12 uh, are labeled as 1B and 2B. And again, this is also an older form of labeling that doesn't appear on all periodic charts. Uh, look for barium and hafnium on your periodic chart. So here's a regular periodic chart and barium is right over here and hafnium is right over here. And I want you to sort of pay attention to the box that's in between barium and hafnium. And what we'll do is we'll take a close-up view of uh, this section right here. We also want to pay attention to uh, the area between radium and rutherfordium. And we want to pay attention to this box that's in between these two uh, elements. Anyway, um, so look for barium and hafnium on your periodic chart. And in between these two elements is either a blank box or uh, LA, LU, or LA-U. Now this indicates that the elements 57 through 71 are all crammed into the box that's between barium and hafnium. And these elements are called the lanthanide series. Uh, they're written as a separate row between the main chart. So all these elements, and this goes all the way out to uh, 71, all these elements on top here get crammed into this little box right here. And likewise, if you look for uh, radium and rutherfordium on the periodic chart, in between you've got a box that's either going to say ACLR or AC-LR. And this indicates that the elements um, 89 through 103 are all crammed into this box in between these two elements. And these elements are called the actinide series. So all these elements right here going out to 103, can't see it up to 103, going all the way out to 103, all these elements here go into this box right here. And these are written below uh, the periodic chart because it makes it easier to read. So all of these elements right here they were supposed to go into this spot right here. Okay, so this is barium right here and then hafnium right there. And this row of elements is supposed to squeeze into that little space right there. Likewise, down here, in this little spot down here, these elements were supposed to be crammed into this little space right here. So these elements that are between uh, radium and rather fordium are all supposed to be crammed into that section right there. Okay, so these lanthanides and actinides are separated from the main chart uh, because uh, they have a distinct electron configurations because the chart's easier to look at when these groups are placed on the bottom. And the periodic chart can also be divided into metals, non-metals, and semi-metals. And semi-metals are also called uh, metalloids. Metals are shiny, malleable, and they conduct heat and electricity. Uh, Nonmetals are dull, brittle, and don't have, uh, they don't conduct heat and electricity. Uh, metalloids have characteristics in between those of metals and nonmetals. They're not quite shiny, they're poor conductors of heat and electricity, like a semiconductor. So, metalloids are the intermediary between metals and uh, nonmetals. They can sort of conduct electricity and heat. Now some periodic charts have a thick jagged diagonal line on the right side of the chart that runs down from boron to acetine. So you see this sort of darker line moving down here from boron to acetine. Some periodic charts have it, uh, some don't. Um, but in general, metals to the left of this jagged line are uh, on this side. So metals are on this side of the jagged line. Nonmetals are to the right of the jagged line. And then the semi-metals, or the metalloids, exist along the jagged line. So you notice that all these green boxes, the side of the box or the bottom of the box is touching 
the jagged line. And in general, if either the entire side or the entire bottom of a box is touching the jagged line, that means it's a metalloid or a semi-metal. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 29, sections of the periodic chart.